was 1985. Symbolics.com was the first domain name registered, the wreck of the Titanic was discovered after 73 years, and the CD-ROM format was created by Philips in collaboration with Sony. And at Microsoft, 1985 marks the company's 10-year anniversary. It also marks the release of Microsoft Mac Enhancer Expansion System, a new hardware product designed to open up the Apple Macintosh computer to a wide range of IBM-compatible peripherals. On February 1, 1985, Ida Cole is named the new Vice President of Applications, responsible for planning, development, and marketing for the application software product line. She was previously with Apple Computer. On May 3rd, Rich McIntosh was called to the Canadian Department of Agriculture to retrieve his Microsoft mouse after it was quarantined for four weeks. On August 9, 1985, Microsoft announced that the company broke ground on a new Microsoft World Headquarters in Redmond, Washington that's scheduled for completion by mid-1986. In other world news, the Live Aid concerts in Philadelphia and London raised almost $250 million for African famine relief. And Coca-Cola introduced New Coke, which was one of the biggest marketing disasters of the 20th century. On August 22, 1985, Microsoft signed an agreement with IBM for joint development of operating systems and other systems software products. In early September, Microsoft selected the Republic of Ireland as the site of its first production facility outside the U.S. for software products to be sold in the European market. And on September 30th, Microsoft announced the shipment of Excel for the Macintosh to retail stores. Excel was a powerful, full-featured microcomputer spreadsheet that combined business graphics with an on-sheet database. As the year came to a close on November 20th, 1985, Microsoft shipped the retail version of Windows, an operating system that extends the features of the MS-DOS. The long wait between announcement and shipment prompts Microsoft to stage the launch as a roast event hosted by John Borak of PC Magazine. Actually, there's been a lot of change uh, for me since Windows was introduced. Uh, actually, the time we started Windows development, I was the financial guy. I was the guy who reviewed the investment decision. I said, okay, six man years, no problem. One disk, no problem. We're now 80 man years later, and we're selling a $99 product with five disks. They moved me into a new job. <laughs> I hit some tough times, though. We got into the delay. The letter went out. I was despondent. Things were bad. I had no respect from anybody. I was even trying to sell my house. I ran a little listing in the Microsoft newsletter for my house. The editor of our internal company newsletter chose to editorialize. Balmer's house has windows. Balmer doesn't. It was bad. Things got worse and worse and worse. By April of this year, it was, it, it was bad. Even Bill, who I've known for a long time, and he, he normally is willing to give me just a little bit of slack, Bill called me into his office. It was a fury of frustration. He starts screaming at me. This was like Bill's 99th Windows bug he had discovered. And I tried to explain to him, hey, Bill, it's really, it's one in 100 million. Most people don't hit the A, D, G, K, and S keys simultaneously at 2 in the afternoon. They'll never see the names of the development group pop up on that screen. Not once! <laughs> Bill, Bill was not to be placated, though. He said to me, Balmer, ship this thing before the snow falls, or you'll end your career here doing Windows. I walked back to my office. I called our PR group. I said, look, let's let the cat out of the bag. This thing is going to ship before the snow falls. <laughs> they did it. Last Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in 10 years, it snowed in Seattle. <laughs> At Microsoft, we're damn proud to have done Windows. Thanks for coming. And I would like to introduce, and I feel privileged to do so, Mr. Bill Gates. <laughs> to dream the possible dream. <laughs> I'd really like to thank um, everybody who came here tonight. Um, first, I'd like to thank Steve, because Steve's really been a part of the whole process. 
Um, <laughs> we used to have a lot of meetings where we'd sit and say, look, we just got to cut features. We just got to cut features. We got to get this thing out. What can we do? And so Steve's kind of a non-technical guy. So he, he came up with this idea that we could rename the thing Microsoft Window. <laughs> <laughs> And we would, have we would have shipped that a long time ago. Actually, I, I'm, I'm the guy who gets to be real serious and uh, talk about the fact um, that, that this really is a great product. We've, we've put our hearts and souls in, into it. Uh, we didn't hesitate in any time to put more people onto it and really uh, make it what we want it to be. And I'm going to show you real quickly a couple highlights from the product. This is the, the user-friendly shell that uh, you first interact with. A little different color? Yeah. And uh, you can run old applications. Here we're running, running one, two, three, doing everything we normally do. Uh, we can bring up a chart, if you can see it. And we uh, just put that chart in the clipboard and went back to Windows. And then we pulled up a paint program. And we used the paste command to pull in this chart. So there it is, the whole chart. You can scroll around, see the whole thing. And you can use the paint program to touch it up. So we're going to use that little bucket, pour some paint in those slices, uh, make this thing look really good. And once we're done with the paint program, we can stick that window on the right and go over and use the shell to start up the right program. So the right program comes up. We can type a letter. And this right program is actually included in with the, the retail package. Now here we're going to use copy and paste to move that graph over into the document. So there it is in the rich text document. The next thing we want to show is, is the graphics and running multiple things at the same time. There it is with some boxes. Very, very high utility value there. Uh, a nice three-dimensional cube. And look, you can do these all at the same time. Uh, palette, full screen cube. Uh, and, and here we're using tiling. We're moving things around. You never lose anything. It automatically resizes. We've got a clock up there. We can put the clock down in the icon area. Um, multitasking. It's multitasking, all right. <laughs> the pro those programmers never forget. Uh, more and more. We've got a calendar program that uses the graphical interface. We've got a card file. We've got a terminal program. Here we're running the terminal program, the card file on the side. Uh, it's all here, all running in uh, 640K and uh, totally flexible. That, no? <laughs> this is real time. 80 megahertz. Now, here we have eight copies of 1, 2, 3, and Multiplan, and DBase, and multiple copies of all these things. And we can run them, move them around, look at the data. Uh, all the old applications run. And now, the retail package of Microsoft Windows. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's here. Nineteen eighty-five saw the release of a variety of products from Microsoft, including MS DOS 2.0, Chart for Macintosh, Microsoft Access 1.0, Business Communication App, not the database, COBOL 2.1, Mac Enhancer 2.0, Basic 2.1 Interpreter for the Mac. Word for Networks, Quick Basic Compiler for Logo, and for Mac. In 1985, the game Tetris was written, the domain name system DNS was created, and Microsoft celebrated its 10th anniversary with sales figures of more than $140 million. But this was the last year the company called Microsoft would be remaining so very private.